Good morning, everyone. A warm welcome to you all. It's wonderful to see all of you out today on this sunny day. It's great to have Mari with us. She took a text from me very early in this morning asking her to fill in because uh, Ben fell ill with uh, a flu bug that his daughter lovingly gave to him. And I, it struck me how quiet it is, is in here today. And I realize that's because the organ fan isn't a constant hum in the background. You'll notice I'm kind of warming you up a little bit because, man, these readings. <laughs> so many sound bites. So many hot topics that we could dive into. From the wisdom of Sirach, we hear, if you choose, you can keep the commandments. And to act faithfully is a matter of your own choice. And he says, God has not commanded anyone to be wicked. God has not given anyone permission to sin. We could build a whole sermon or two or three around that. Or from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, for as long as there is any jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? He gets us thinking about how we interact with one another. But then he says, goes on and says, for we are God's servants working together. You're God's field, God's building. And then, then meek and mild Jesus says, you have heard it said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder and whoever murders shall be liable ju to judgment. But I say to you, and we hear that repeated a couple times, you've heard it said in the Old Testament laws, but I say to you, as Jesus claims his rightful place as the Son of God with authority. But then he goes on and poses all of these challenges about anger and adultery and lust and divorce and lying. You can feel pretty beat up with these readings. And he could have gone on. There are 613 Jewish laws over which tomes of have been written. Teachings from rabbis passed on from generation to generation down to Jesus' time. So there can be a fair bit of weight that we're feeling right now. So let's lighten it up a little bit and let me tell you about a game that I was introduced to by my son about a year and a half ago. It's a card game. It's called The Crew, The Quest for Planet Nine. And it involves suits and Trump and taking tricks and such. And it's all set in with a kind of a mission to get you to planet nine by going through and accomplishing 50 different tasks with respect to taking tricks. On any particular hand, you might be assigned to make sure that you take the two of something, or you can't take any tricks that hand, or that person has to take their trick before you take yours. It gets a little complicated. It starts out easy. The rules are really quite straightforward if you've played any, any uh, card games involving taking tricks. But when I played it, the thing that really threw me off was that it's a cooperative game. All the card games that take tricks that I've played in the past, 
You're trying to beat someone. But here, the whole crew is working together with kind of limited communication. You can't just tell people what you have in your hand. You might be able to, on some turns, give a little hint of sorts. But the achievement, and what a relief it was to me when it finally sunk in, is that we're all in this together. And that is a wisdom that our Eucharist, our liturgy, brings to us. We start out with the summary of the law. And most of us can get a little cringy when we get into the topics of laws and commands, particularly if we maybe had parents who said, because I say so. But then others might find some comfort in the laws and rules. Maybe they had permissive parents who let anything go, and inevitably they walked into disaster. And then you throw in the wild card of our personalities not just our backgrounds. All of this makes communication among us a challenge. So maybe I'm chickening out, but I'm not going to dive into any particular hot topic today. But I think there's wisdom that we are hearing Jesus looking at the Old Testament rules with the people who are listening to him and saying, you've heard it said. You have had this discussion down through the centuries. You've arrived at these conclusions. But I say to you, he doesn't ease off. He pushes harder. But that's where listening to the words of our liturgy, the summary of the law, is so helpful. Because it was Jesus who, in addition to the ancient Hebrews, summarized the law. And he did it this way. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. I love the play on words. Israel is one single individual. Jacob, who struggled with the angel, struggled with God, was wounded, but then God gives him a new name, Israel. But then that name also indicates all of his descendants, the nation of Israel. And most New Testament scholars, church theologians, will tell you that the church, we are the new Israel. So we can hear those words both as an individual, that's certainly the tendency I take, but remember, it is spoken to, to the plural, to this community. And what it says isn't just you got to love by feeling sentimental towards God or something like that. But it's a, a full person experience. Your mind has to be geared towards loving God. 
your soul, your body in, in its strength and what it can do. And of course, your heart, your emotions, the full person is asked to be in relationship with God. And then, and then, the summary, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You hear that? All of those laws, those 613 laws, they all hang on love, loving God and loving our neighbors. So before we get too deep into the particularities of those hot button issues, we best keep in mind that in our discussion, in the path that we go down, that loving God and loving neighbor as ourselves is a true guiding force. But then what do we do with those particularly high standards that Jesus sets? Those impossible standards. There again, I invite you to turn to our liturgy in that beautiful prayer of humble access. You know the one. You know the one where you acknowledge, I've fallen short of those high standards. And so I don't presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in and interestingly, we do say it in the plural, our own righteousness. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. Jesus laid down some pretty strict rules, laws, commandments about adultery, about anger and murder. But look too to Jesus, who when everyone was ready to stone the woman caught in the very act of adultery, challenges them. If you've not sinned, you can throw the first stone. And one by one, starting with the oldest, they dropped their stones and walked away. And Jesus said, neither will I condemn you. And as he hung on the cross with those soldiers who were in the very act of killing him, he cries out, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. So we need not look so glum when we hear these kinds of readings. Because though the law is challenging and we continue to strive by God's grace towards holiness, for we are to become saints. We are to grow up and mature, as Paul told the Corinthians. 
But when we fall short, we can count on God's mercy. Even they knew that even in the Old Testament. We heard it in the refrain. You spoke it many times already this morning. <clears throat> Happy are they who walk in the law of the Lord. And when we slip and fall, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.